Today, I'm going to be talking about the quantity of life. And with the understanding that the extra years that I want to give to everybody are quality years. Now, what I want to talk about is that quality years. So what I want to talk about is that there's a barrier to our super longevity that all of us have, and that's telomere shortening. <clears throat> Telomeres put a absolute limit on our lifespan. So, so what's a telomere? To know what a telomere is, we've got to zoom in on a human being. We see that a human is made up of cells. The cells have nuclei. And inside the nuclei are found chromosomes. Chromosomes are where our DNA are. You see, this isn't working every time. DN chromosomes are where our DNA is packaged. At the tip of our chromosomes are found the telomeres. The telomeres are shown here in yellow. If we zoom in on a telomere, we find that a telomere is about 15,000 bases in length, at least when we're first conceived. And every single time our cells divide, each and every time they divide, our telomeres get a little bit shorter. So there are 15,000 bases. The bases are units of measurement of DNA. There are 15,000 bases when we're first conceived, but as soon as our cells start to divide, they get shorter. And there's a lot of cell divisions between, let's see, the clicker's not always working, somebody, I don't know. The, the, there's so much cell division between being a single cell embryo and a newborn baby that by the time you're born, your telomeres have already shortened down to 10,000 bases. And it doesn't stop there because there's still a lot of growing up to do, a lot of cell division, a lot of wounds to heal, a lot of infections to fight. And when telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function, and we die. It's a ticking clock that we have in all of us that, as I said, limit our lifespan. What I want to do is I want to talk about the mechanism of this ticking, because it's not like you hear a lot of other clocks that involve some kind of wear and tear or uh, accumulation of damage. This is actually a clock that actually has a very accurate, precise movement. So to explain this, I want to first make it clear that contrary to popular belief, telomeres do not actually shorten. They don't erode, they don't unravel, they don't shred, they don't degrade, they don't wear away, they don't get damaged. All these things you hear about are just because this is an easy way to explain what's going on. What I want to do is I want to explain that a little bit differently. What I want to do is I want to compare our DNA to the top layer of bricks on a brick wall. So let's get rid of the other bricks. Let's get rid of that cat. <laughs> and now, think of this as a DNA molecule inside of a cell. I'm sorry, I can't make a circle with this hand. My arm's broken. but. Imagine I am, I, you've got a parent cell divides to become two daughter cells. Everything inside that parent cell needs to be duplicated so that the daughter cells are identical to the parent cell. So the DNA inside the cell also needs to be duplicated. All right, so think of it as a brick wall. You have a brick layer making a new row of bricks on top of that brick wall. So the brick layer is called DNA polymerase one or DNA polymerase inside of our cells, and it's, <clears throat> it just moves along and makes a copy of the DNA. What I want to do is I want to focus on the very tip of the chromosome here, the telomere, and you're going to see that there's a little bit of a problem because when the brick layer gets to the end of the wall, the brick layer cannot put a brick in the last place he was standing. So the new DNA is shorter than the old one. It didn't get, it didn't shorten, it was made shorter. Didn't degrade or erode or unravel, all those different things. This is called the end replication problem. It's been known since the 1970s that uh, our cells lack the ability to be able to replicate the very tips of the chromosomes. So when our chromosomes are duplicated, the new chromosome is shorter than the parent chromosome. Okay, so this cell is going to divide again. And again, that brick layer is going to come along. 
and he is again going to fall off that wall when he gets to the end. And the third row of bricks is shorter than the second one. And the third is going to be shorter than the fourth is going to be shorter than the third. This is the ticking. This is the actual ticking that's going on. And I want to, I want to say that in most cases, telomere shortening is not wear and tear, or it is not accumulation of damage. Telomere shortening is simply the lack of the ability to replicate the very end. And <clears throat> so it's, it's a very accurate ticking system. It's not like wear and tear and uh, uh, accumulation of damage, which are very random events and therefore cannot be a very accurate clock. But this clock is very accurate. So because of ticking, <clears throat> our cells can only divide 50 times. This has been known since the 1960s that cells can only divide a certain number of times, and it's because of the telomere shortening. Our lifespan is limited to 125 years because of this. If you do the math, calculate how much times, how much telomere gets short each time a cell divides, how many times a cell divides to make us human, we can only live to be 125 years. None of us live that long only because we have the, not the perfect lifestyles and we don't have the perfect genetics. Gene expression patterns change as the telomeres get shorter. Our cells be, start behaving, like, the young cells start behaving like old cells and our cells become senescent. This is the major cause of replicative senescence in humans. This is not a theory. This is why I'm talking about our limit to our lifespan and not aging at the moment. Every lab in the world that works, on human, works with human cells in a petri dish knows that the human cells can only divide a certain number of times. And the same is true in our bodies. So we have this absolute limit. <clears throat> Telomere shortening limits our lifespan. Now, if I can get this, telomere shortening might be the cause of aging. That's just a theory. I, wouldn't, I would be very surprised if it wasn't. But, but we, don't, we don't know that, we don't have the proof of it yet, and we won't have the proof of it until we actually can figure out a way to completely lengthen all of our telomeres. It also might be the control of all the other causes of aging you, you hear about. But we don't know. This is still just a speculation. It might be the case. And again, this is what I'm doing my research on. This is what I'm trying to find out. Bottom line is because of this limit, absolute limit to our lifespan, no matter what else we do to control the aging process, none of, nothing else is ever going to work unless we also solve this telomere shortening problem. So this is something that we have to do. How are we going to do that? Okay, well, this is what Mike West and I have been working on for 40 years, it seems like. And one thing, one, the first observation that gives us a clue that there's something we can do is the fact that not all of our cells experience this telomere shortening. Our reproductive cells don't. I mean, Mike West talked about the immortal germline, okay? Our reproductive cells are part of that immortal germline, and they, the telomeres do not shorten when the cells divide in those cells. And why is that? Well, Mike, and, Mike West and I led the research that discovered the enzyme called human telomerase. The green squiggly thing that you see in the picture is the DNA molecule shown as a double helix. And the factory looking thing is the enzyme telomerase that binds to the tip of the chromosome and lengthens the telomere. And so this enzyme is actually making it so that our children are born with as long of telomeres as we had when we were born because without that enzyme, they would be born with much shorter telomeres than we have. We would have been extinct as a species millions of years ago. Okay, so this is true in humans, but it's actually only true in our reproductive cells. It's not true in all the other cells of our body. I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Now, this is also true for dogs, cats, horses, sheep, pig, deer, and some other primates, not, not lemurs, but it's true for marmosets. It works for prime, uh, uh, marmosets. Okay, now this isn't true for rodents and other kinds of animals. 
they have telomerase in all of their cells, and they don't experience telomere shortening, at least to the level that humans do. Okay, so why is it that we shut off, why our other cells don't produce telomerase? And it's because of gene regulation. This is a picture of the telomerase gene on a chromosome. It's like every other gene. And next to every gene is a regulatory element. This is like an on-off switch. This is more like a dimmer switch. It turns the lights on and off. And in our reproductive cells, that is on the on position. And so that gene is producing telomerase. And that's why the telomeres don't shorten in our reproductive cells. In all the other cells of our body, there's some protein that binds to that switch and shuts it off. That protein's called a repressor. And <clears throat> why is it there? That's a, I could spend an hour talking about that, but I'm not, I don't have time today. So there's two ways to fix this problem, and we're working on both of them. And one is called telomerase gene induction, and that's where we find a drug that you can swallow or inject. It binds to that repressor, dislodges it, and turns the gene on. So we've been working on that for 20 years. We have several different departments in our company that are all working on this. We design chemicals, we test them, they, we get tested in a high-throughput robotic system. Then we find some drugs, chemicals, let's say uh, small molecule drugs, that will actually turn on the telomerase gene. And then we take those back to those departments and they analyze those, use the information they learn from those to design even better things, to, find, to make more drugs that will be even more potent. And so it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth through these departments, always going through our high throughput robots. So far we've tested 350,000 different chemicals doing it this way, some by random drugs testing, some by medicinal chemistry. We have found over 900 that will induce the production of telomerase to some level, some detectable level. And then we've been able to group them into 39 families. The most potent that we have found so far is about, produces about 16% as much telomerase as we think we need to actually prevent telomere shortening. And so that's where we're there. So we're not there yet, but we're still working on this. The other approach is called telomerase gene therapy. Now, this is a human cell, and that's the gene therapy. And I want you to think of them as soap bubbles. And inside the soap bubble, the small soap bubble, the gene therapy one, we put the gene for telomerase. And this gene has been engineered, so it's a little bit stronger than the natural gene. Okay, now we all know that when soap bubbles fuse, they come together, they fuse, and the contents of one go into the other. And so that gene now is inside the human cell from the, because of the gene therapy, and it then produces telomerase. And because it's engineered to be very strong, it produces a lot of telomerase. So this, this actually is potent enough to actually produce enough telomerase to lengthen our telomeres. And if anybody is really interested in getting this done on themselves really fast, then you absolutely do not want to miss the next talk, which is Liz Parrish, who will be talking about telomerase gene therapy. Now, I want to make it really clear, Sierra Sciences is a research company. We do not market anything. Most, most people are unaware of the fact that almost every drug on the market was not produced or not invented by the company that sells it. It's, they're invented by other smaller labs like mine that then when they make these discoveries, they license them to the marketing companies that are specialized at marketing. So our intentions are to, when we build better and better gene therapies, pass them on to BioViva. Okay, so with either the small molecule drugs or with the telomerase gene therapy, or Liz Parrish is gonna come along and give you gene therapy to lengthen your telomeres and add that missing brick. So, are we there yet? Somebody else said that yesterday at one of the talks. 
The answer is no. We're still working on it. What's taking so long? <laughs> and, and I've said this before, the answer is, is funding. And, and believe me, that's the only reason I'm standing on stage instead of working in the lab doing the research is because the research, not just mine, but everybody's, Greg Fays, Liz Parrish's, Aubrey de Grey's, everybody's research is limited by funding. So I'm trying to get people to spread the word, help us find the funding to get the research done. I'm not a businessman, I'm a scientist. I'm not the best person at raising money. I could use help. Okay, so I, I've said a lot about, I said very little about telomeres today, because I only have 20 minutes, but if people want to learn more, I do have a, uh, a video on my website called Everything About Telomeres. Unfortunately, it's over two hours long, but it starts with a table of contents, or yeah, table of contents that can tell you where to go listen to find out each of the subjects and hear in great detail. Everything from how we age, why we age, everything that you can think of, I've covered in this video. So I recommend you go there. You can scroll through this video. Again, it's at my, so I'll call it Everything About Telomeres. It's at my website, sierrasai.com. And one thing I want to say before I end is I would like to support, you heard Joe Barden talk, talk, Joe Bardeen talk about this. I'd like to support BioViva's effort to do the dementia gene therapy studies. So anybody donating or can find other people to donate, please do so. This is important to all of us. My interest is curing my own aging, even if I'm not the one that does it. Okay, I want to see my aging get cured. I also want to support BioViva's effort on best choice medicine. This is going to allow people that are suffering from uh, terminal diseases or diseases that are not worth living to be able to try experimental treatments to save their lives, which are right now not allowed. So I encourage support that effort too. You'll hear Liz talk about that right after I'm done. I do want to end with why do I, why am I so obsessed with curing aging? And a lot of people think that I'm just afraid of dying. Part of why I wanted uh, Maria to talk about all these things I've done is because I want you to realize that I do a lot of dangerous things. If I was afraid of dying, I wouldn't be doing a lot of those things that I have done, okay? I'm afraid of missing out. A lot of great things are gonna happen in the future, okay? This, this is a picture of Star Trek First Contact when Humans are first making contact with aliens from outer space. Okay, when that happens, I want to be there. Okay. And, and I want all of us to be there. Okay, let's make it so. Thank you very much.